All right. So we are on to our sixth and final best practice today. Uh, what Doug alluded to, it's analyzing the test data. Uh, so here, the type of analysis that you perform on your test data depends on the data you collected and who was involved in your test. So for most usability tests, quantitative data that is collected is some combination of completion rates, like I mentioned before. Uh, there could be errors uh, that you observe during the test sessions. Uh, deviations, like Tony explained earlier today. Uh, task times, if you are indeed timing participants on completing each test task. Uh, you may have also asked task level satisfaction ratings. Uh, and perhaps there's a list of uh, usability problems that you've captured. Um, and maybe you've rated those usability problems on uh, frequency and uh, severity. So when you are calculating your test results, it is helpful for readers um, or consumers of your results to understand how precise your estimates are uh, as compared to the unknown population value. So try to report your results with confidence intervals around any means that you've calculated. This helps to provide readers with the most likely range of the unknown population mean uh, or proportion. You may also want to compare your results to a specific benchmark uh, or goal in order to determine whether there is a difference uh, between products or designs or versions. And from calculating those confidence intervals, uh, you can use the boundaries of the interval to determine whether or not you have met or exceeded a particular goal. So let me break this down a little bit for you and provide you with an example. Here we have on screen uh, a result from our test. Uh, this result compares the system usability scale score for the Siemens system involved in our test to the average system usability score, uh, that's an industry score. So uh, note here that uh, the confidence interval around the score of 83 out of 100, uh, and you can see that um, it's a little gray uh, error bars there. Uh, this means that we can be 95% confident that the true score is between uh, 77 and 89, which is well above the average industry score of 68 out of 100. Okay, so next up here, also for our comparative usability tests, I mentioned it's important to understand who's involved in your test to analyze your results. So here we've got um, two examples where participants can complete tasks on all products. That's the within subjects design that you see on the left side of your screen. Or different sets of uh, users can work with each product. It's between subjects design. So on our most recent comparative test, it was a within subjects design. Um, keep in mind that the test design uh, impacts the calculations that determine if the difference is statistically significant or not. Uh, for our test, we found a great value in the within subjects design. Uh, besides benefits such as conducting the usability test in the same period of time with the same recruitment effort and lab space, we were also able to remove a major source of variation between sets of data by involving the same participants in each test group. Uh, so another fundamental advantage of that within subjects design is statistical power because you have, in effect, uh, increased the number of subjects uh, relative to the between subjects design. All right, getting towards the end here of our final best practice. Uh, it's another tip here uh, that we've got while you're analyzing your results. Um, and in order to do your analysis and keep it as straightforward as possible, we definitely recommend thoroughly planning, creating this master spreadsheet of all of the test data you've collected. Um, we found creating a spreadsheet for products works well sometimes, um, and using one program to document all the data and complete your calculations does uh, definitely save you time from having to copy it from another application. 
Uh, often also spreadsheet uh, software applications have many built-in functions that you'll need to help with your analysis, uh, such as the case with us. Uh, we had t-test calculations to acquire those precise p-values um, that I was referring to before when statistical significance needs to be calculated.